beginning a brand new series today entitled From Dream to Reality. From Dream to Reality. Because I believe the Lord spoke to me earlier this year and he said, when you come into the fall season, you need to tell my people it's time to dream. Now there are some people who would say this is really bad timing for such a sermon series due to the fact that the economy is struggling and there's so many issues happening around us. But I want to remind you of something that you've got to get into your mind if you're going to be successful in this season. And that is this, we are in this world, but we are not of it. I may be living in America, but I am really a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And so America goes through recessions and recoveries and all these different economic things. But the kingdom of heaven knows no recession. The kingdom of heaven knows no retreat. It never backs off. It never slows down. We talked about it just a few weeks ago. The nature of the kingdom is for it to grow and to expand. And so it is in seasons like this that we must settle our spirits and our souls as to which kingdom we're going to be a part of and then live accordingly. Y'all real quiet today. See, I preached somewhere else last week, and I told my wife, it was, we had a great service, powerful time, but I told my wife, they, they just don't get with me like my folks. But then y'all quiet today. I'm going to have to go back to Georgia. Because they's better than you last week. And you're better than them normally. So Ephesians chapter 3 verse number 20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, close to, beyond all that we ask or imagine according to the power that works in us. He said, God is able to do beyond what we can ask for, what we can imagine, but there is a connection to the power of God working in us. And so what we're going to do over the course of the next several weeks, today and next Sunday, I'm going to challenge you to begin to dream. And we're going to talk about what a dream is and how to get a God-given dream. But then we're going to go beyond that in the weeks following that because the reality is there are a lot of people who have God-given dreams that never become reality. Just because you dream it doesn't mean God's going to do it. If you can dream it, God can do it. But where it gets lost a lot of times is in your responsibility in the in-between. God breathes it, God completes it, but in between there's some stuff he's got to do in us and through us that if we don't let it happen, it's never going to happen. And there are some of you sitting here this morning that say, I've had dreams that have never come to pass. Well, I want to encourage you in this season that maybe the reason they haven't come to pass is it wasn't time yet. Or maybe they haven't come to pass because you didn't do what it took to get it to come to pass. But what I love about God-given visions is they have no expiration date. God said in Joel chapter 2 that I'll redeem the years. He said, he said, you may have wasted time, but if I gave you a dream, as if you'll do what I ask you to do, I don't care how long it's been since I gave you the dream, I still intend to fulfill the dream. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about dreams this morning. Three things I want you to know about dreams, first of all. I want you to know, first of all, that dreams are the language of God. In Acts chapter number 2, he told Peter, stood up and preached to us that in the last days God will pour out his spirit upon all people. And he said, your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. And when I'm talking about a dream, I'm not talking about going to sleep and having something come to you through the night. I'm talking about visions. I'm talking about basically the way I want to uh, describe a dream for the sake of this series is it is a picture of God's preferred future for you. 
is God comes down and reveals to you where he sees your life going, where he sees your family going, where he sees your business going, where he sees our church going. He begins to give you a picture of his preferred future, and that's what a dream is, and God uses dreams as his language. It's how he speaks to us. Oftentimes the way he works in our life is by giving us a picture of something we don't yet possess and saying, that's what I want you to experience. That's what I want you to do. I mean, that's the very basis of of our Christian faith because when we come to faith, he said he wants to bring us into the image of Christ Jesus. So what he's saying is from the moment you come in, you're a dirty, rotten sinner, all messed up, but he goes ahead and gives you a picture and says, for I'm done with you, you're going to look like Jesus. Problem is, you don't get to look like Jesus by sitting there waiting on God to make you that way. It's his language. It's how he speaks to us. It's how he talks to us. And God wants to give dreams and visions and preferred future pictures to every person in this room. If you want to hear the voice of God more times than not, it will not be some audible voice thundering from heaven saying, this is what thou shalt do. It will oftentimes be a picture of a future you don't yet possess with something on the inside of you saying, God is speaking to me that that's where he wants me to go. God wants to talk to you in dreams and visions. He wants to show you somewhere you are not presently. And throughout the course of these next several weeks, I want us to dream for our church. I want us to see God's preferred picture for where our church is headed. But I also understand that if our church is going to become all that God created it to be, we must all individually become who God created us to be. Because dreams are interconnected. You can't get the church's dream without your dream. And you You can't get your dream without the church's dream because we're all tied together in the sovereign plan of God. And so I need you not only to dream with me for our church, but I need you to begin to let God to inspire you to dream for your family. What do you see your family looking like in five years if Jesus would tarry? What, where are your children? Are they saved? Are they full of the Holy Ghost? Are they involved in serving in ministry? Are they doing this, that, or the other? Where are you financially? What has God done in your business? I want you to begin to ask him to show you his preferred future for you because that's his language. He likes to talk to you through dreams and visions. Another thing that is true about dreams is that dreams are the target for your faith. See, the problem with faith is it only works when it has an object. You can't believe in general. you got to believe specifically. And when we don't have a dream or a vision, we say, Oh, I believe God, but for what? Some of you, the reason why your faith isn't working is because you've never given it a target. Come on now. I had to, I had to learn this, this week, the last couple of weeks, we put a target on our faith. And we said, this is what we need God to do. We need him to work. We know, because that's what my wife, she said on Tuesday, she said, Ryan, I've just decided we're tithers, we're givers, and this is not how our story goes. And I'll be honest with you. I'm not this mighty man of faith that never doubts. I was like, well, you go ahead and believe, sister. Because all I see is zeros after numbers. But I knew God had a preferred future for me. And I needed to get a hold of that picture. And then I needed to begin to let my faith target in on that. Some of you, the reason why God wants to give you a dream is because he wants to develop your faith. And the only way he can develop your faith is if you allow him to breathe into you a picture of a preferred future so you can begin to target your faith towards that and say, I'm believing for that job promotion. I'm I'm believing for my child to get saved. I'm, I'm believing for us to be able to pay down our mortgage. I'm believing he's going to give you a picture of a preferred future for you and then that's going to become a target for your faith. And I love the fact that faith Faith will always bring to pass the movement of God. You say, well, uh, just because I believe doesn't mean God will do whatever. See, that's the thing. If God gave you the dream, 
if God showed you the picture, then it's not yours to decide whether or not he's going to do it because he's the one who brought it up. There's been many times in my life where I've been struggling between the picture of what God said and what I what and and seeing it come into reality. And what I will oftentimes pray to God is I'll say, God, I didn't come up with this. I was perfectly fine living my normal everyday life, and then you drop this picture in my spirit, put a fire in me that I had to see it come to pass. And so I know if you gave it to me, it's not my responsibility wholly to get it done. You're going to be a part of it too. And so I target my faith on the picture you painted for me. I believe you're going to bring it to pass. Third thing is that dreams when you target your faith on them, have a habit of coming true. If God bursts it in you, I'm going to tell you that as long as you don't get in the way, God will bring it to pass. But you don't understand my situation, my circumstance. Forget your situation and your circumstance. Your God is bigger than all those things. Well, but but what if the devil... Oh. The devil's going to fight, and we'll talk about that in the coming weeks. But he don't have the authority or the ability to disrupt a God-given dream when we keep our focus and our faith in Jesus. When you continue to make it the target of your faith, it don't matter what demon in hell tries to stand against it. They can't stop it because God's dreams have a habit of coming true. Well, then what stops us from dreaming big dreams? Why do so many people settle for so much less than all that God has for them? Well, I believe there are three different reasons. First of all, there are people who have a wrong view of life in general. They are constantly being sidetracked by the insignificant, not allowing God to speak to them about the significant. They are so focused on, well... I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my Ameren bill this month. That you don't even have the capacity to take a moment and believe God to get you out of debt. I'm preaching pretty good. This is pretty good stuff if you can grab a hold of it. As we get a wrong view of life, we're so focused on what's wrong, what's going wrong around us, the issues that we're facing, the struggles that we're dealing with, that we do not have the capacity to even listen to God for what he would like to see him see do in our future, the the, the preferred future and the picture he'd like to paint for us because we're so focused on everything that's wrong. And I want to challenge you to get your eyes off of your circumstance. But sometimes we don't dream big dreams because we've got a wrong view of ourself. Some of you, the reason why you can't dream big dreams is because you know who you are and what you've done. But I need you to understand something. God-given dreams are never based on your ability, capacity, or history. They're based on his desire, his plan, and his will. And he oftentimes gives dreams and fulfills them and brings them to reality in the lives of people that you and I would say are the least likely, least worthy, don't make any sense. He likes to confound the wise with his power and his ability. And so you need to stop seeing yourself the way you look at yourself. You need to stop seeing yourself the way other people look at you. And you to start seeing yourself the way God sees you. Because God sees potential in you. I love a God who can find Gideon hiding in a wine press and his declaration to him is, Thou mighty man of valor. Some of you need to have your mighty man of valor moment this morning. You need to hear the Lord speak to you and say, I don't see an addict. I see someone who's going to transform a community. I I don't see someone who's walking through divorce. I see someone who's getting ready to do ministry to those who are struggling with what they're struggling with. I I don't see someone that is broke and homeless. I see someone who's going to finance the kingdom because God can turn. 
got to get your view of yourself right if you want to dream big. You got to realize who God says you are and that anything is possible when God begins to breathe it into your life. You can't just make stuff up, but when God speaks, it don't matter how insignificant you feel, how unworthy you feel. You got to get your eyes off of you because it's not about you. But then we also have a wrong view of God. There is so many what I what I call Christian atheists in the world today. They say, I believe in God. But then they live as if he does not exist. When problems come your way, you never even contemplate the possibility that God would move on your behalf. Because you just got to figure it out. You're a Christian atheist. You, you, you say you believe in God. You come to church on Sunday morning, but you don't believe God is really able to do any of the things that we sing and preach and pray and believe that He will do. And if you get that view of God, you can't get a God-given dream because when the God-given dream comes to you, you will reject it because you don't think you can do it and you don't believe God will do it. But if you get a hold of a view of the God who created the universe... You have to understand that everything that you see in the vast universe, they are still trying to get telescopes and scientific capacity to measure and see into the vast reality that is the universe that your God created with one sentence. And so you think he can't make that happen for you? What, what, well, Pastor Ryan, you don't realize that the, 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 what, what, what's been stirring in me is it's going to cost millions of dollars. Do you know God? Uh, it's get, it gets real quiet when you, because like, you're like, thousand dollar miracles, I can kind of get. No, we, we have a trillion whatever's after that, more than that, capacity God. And oftentimes the reason why we never see those kind of dreams come to pass is not because he wouldn't do it, it's because we don't believe him for it. We don't see him as able. We try to, religion tries to explain away the absence of the activity of God in our life. Well, you know, it's not always God's will and, you know, we don't understand it. And these things are all true. But I'm afraid they have become such a crutch that they have de de deactivated our faith walk to the point where we don't believe God for big things because we have convinced ourselves that God doesn't do big things except for people that are in the Bible. But I need to help you with something. Before they were in the Bible, they were just like you. And, and, and should God have decided to keep the story rolling, some of you would have been in the version of the Bible that talked about now. Because you started out just like a Moses, not doing anything of any significance, making a big mistake that puts you on the backside of a mountain just watching some sheep until God, after you were old enough to be an AARP, came and said, I'm going to use you to deliver an entire nation. You forget, that's the story. Some of you are just like Abraham, who was told he'd be the father of many nations, but he hadn't fathered a child at a hundred. But God said he would. And what I love is, a lot of times we don't talk about Abraham's story, we talk about Isaac and Ishmael. But Abraham had him a whole mess of kids after Isaac. Couldn't get pregnant while they were in childbearing years. But then after they should have been in the nursing home, all of a sudden they start having babies. Why? Because God can do whatever he wants to do. And he can do it through you if you'll believe him for it. But you got to get a right view of him, a right view of you, and a right view of your life if you're going to dream big dreams. So I hope that these, the, over the course of the next several weeks, you'll start focusing your view of these things so that you can begin to hear your God dream. 
The last thing this morning is, what does a God-honoring dream look like? Because I'm telling you, this if, if you take this series and you think Pastor Ryan is up here telling you that if you can just imagine amazing things, that you can have whatever you imagine, that is incorrect. You don't get to pick and choose what you want God to do. If God is only required and willing to move in your behalf on the things He's breathing into you. And some of you have dreams that are not from God. And what I love is that God in His grace will refuse to give you those dreams. Because dreams that aren't from God have a typical talent for taking us away from God. People who get successful business success but don't have a God-given dream that they recognize it's about the kingdom more than it is about their own financial gain have a way of getting in a place where they start getting so much money that they don't think they need God anymore. And some, some of us in this room are struggling financially, not by the judgment of God, but by the grace of God. Because you're in a place right now that if God blessed you financially, you would walk away and leave Him in an instant. And so what you need to do is get a God dream where God begins to develop in you the capacity to carry what He wants to put on you so that it does not destroy your relationship with Him. And so you need to get in a place and say, God, I don't want my dream. I don't want what I want. I want what you have for me. And so how do you know it's a God-breathed dream, a God-honoring dream? Well, the first thing is God-honoring dreams will always seem risky. God is not going to birth something in you to accomplish that is easy. Because if it was easy, you could do it without Him and you could take all the credit. And you're going to have to understand something. When Jesus saves you, if the goal was to get you to heaven, then He would kill you right then. Because you're ready to go to heaven. I mean, when you give your heart to Jesus, you're as good for heaven as if you're already there. There's nothing else. You you don't have to work out yourself. You don't have to live a certain way after that moment to make it some way how you earned it. The blood of Jesus has forgiven you. So why does he take the chance of leaving us here? It's because he wants to bring himself glory through our lives. And he doesn't get glory through us doing easy things. He gets glory through us taking major risks. And so I need to prepare you. If you're going to pray and believe for a God dream, understand it's going to make you uncomfortable. In fact, let me go ahead and make another strong statement here. If you are comfortable in your present situation, you are not living a God dream. He said, oh, I, I got it. I'm cool. I got everything figured out. Everything's where I got everything in order. My life makes sense. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm going to do. Well, I'm sorry, friend. You're living your dream. You're living a life that I got to be honest, sometimes I would be very envious of. But if you're living a God dream, there's always going to be an element of risk involved. There's always going to be a this could go really bad. Because God is always calling us to the edge of our faith, to the place where we will believe Him for things that seem impossible. Because God honoring dreams, secondly, will always require God's assistant or assistance or involvement. He's going to ask us to do things that seem impossible because He is the God of the impossible. And he does not ask us to do things that seem impossible so that he can scare us. He asks us to do things impossible so that he can draw us into inviting him into involvement in our situation. And so if what you're dreaming to do, you say, well, Pastor Ryan, I've got this five-year plan, and I know if I do this, this, and this, and if I meet this person, I can do that. That's not a God dream. A God dream says, if God doesn't move, there's no way I'll get this done. I must have divine intervention. I must have divine involvement. 
That's why here at Hope Unlimited Church, we don't have a dream that says, well, we want to pay our bills. Now, I'm not going to lie, there have been times when that was the dream. If we can just pay the bills this month. But we are now at a place where we're saying, to do what God is putting in the heart of this house to do, we're talking about millions of dollars. And unless, unless, now you know me, I, I don't check in on people's giving records, but unless some of y'all millionaires out there are not giving properly, the millions aren't here yet. So how are we going to do it, Pastor Ryan? We're not. He is. But we got to dream and believe and begin to walk in that direction, begin to act as though He's going to do it, and then His involvement shows up as we walk in faith, believing and trusting Him and asking Him to work and to move on our behalf. You need God's involvement in a God-honoring dream. Don't you dare insult God by saying your dream is something you can do. Let Him burst something on inside of you that tells, makes you wake up every morning going, if you don't, Jesus, we in trouble. Not wishful thinking, it's got to be birthed from him. But when it's birthed from him, it's always going to require him. But thirdly, and maybe most importantly, God honoring dreams will change lives. You're going to have to understand something about the dream God wants to give you. Oftentimes, God birthed dreams are neither about you nor about now. God sees something in the future you don't yet see. And the answer to that problem is going to come through the dream He gives to you. That problem may involve you and it may not involve you. That's irrelevant. But what is for certain is God sees something in the future that needs to be dealt with and so He puts a dream on the inside of you and begins to position you, empower you, and process you to that place so that when you get there, somebody's life is going to be radically altered and changed because you dreamed a God dream. And sometimes you know the people who are involved in your God dream, and sometimes they're people you have no idea. There's some of you in this room that God wants to put a God-sized dream on the inside of you for business. And He's going to raise you up with incredible financial blessing. And through that financial blessing, you're going to give to things like kingdom builders and you're going to see people saved in continents you will never step foot on. You won't know them till you get to heaven, but your God-given dream will be a part of their salvation story. And if you hadn't had your dream, Dream, they may have not had their moment. And so God wants to give you a dream that will begin to impact and change lives all around you. Some of you, though, the dream he's giving you is, is, is about your family. That he wants to do something in you that will radically impact generations after you. See, I'm standing on this stage this morning because Charles Mayberry Sr. let God birth a dream on the inside of him. First generation believer, first generation Pentecostal, first generation preacher. But he started planting churches and starting camp meetings and preaching revivals. And he had a dream bigger than himself. So that on the night he was passing away, he had a great grandson that's two years old, came and ran in his room by himself. And by myself, I sat in his bed for five minutes. And my great grandmother, my parents, everybody there believes that he passed on his legacy onto me. There's no other explanation why at 12 years old I couldn't look the person in the eye to order a soda pop at the restaurant, but I could stand up and preach like nobody's business. It wasn't because of me, it was because there was a dream before me that passed down to me. And I'm doing what I'm doing, but see, the thing is, I want to birth a God's dream in my life that means my children will never know what I know. My, my great-grandfather never pastored more than 100 people in his whole life. 
And now look at me. But I want my children to accomplish so much more than I'm accomplishing. And part of that is getting a God-given dream right now that I can begin to enact that when I enact it, it's going to set a floor for them that used to be a ceiling. God wants to give you generational transition through dreams and vision. He wants to speak to you about your family and help you position yourself so that your children don't deal with what you've dealt with. They don't struggle with what you've struggled with, but they begin to start where you're ending so they can go places you never imagined going because that's what God vision looks like. It's going to change people's lives. There are people in this city right now there are people this morning that woke up on a park bench. They woke up in a gutter somewhere. They are hopelessly messed up and tore up from the floor up, and they don't know where to go. And you know what the answer to their problem is? A dream that's about to be birthed in somebody's heart right here. See, there's a dream that's just getting off the, off the floor right now with our Monday night freedom group. That's a dream that God's been birthing in this house for a long time. Can, can I talk real right now? Because that dream's been in this house for years, but there have been different people who were supposed to step into it who missed their moment. And I thank God for Luke and Charla Wynn Because they stepped up in this moment. And I'm telling you, it's just getting started. And Because I'm going to tell you what I believe a God dream is in, for this house, for this city, for this community. Is I still believe. I love it because up here, one of the prayer requests that was up here during 21 days of prayer. Somebody put on there, I said, I, I can agree with that. Is we're going to have a drug free Danville. That's cute, Pastor. No, that's a God dream. I can't do it. Seems risky. Seems impossible. But it's God breathing it because it's not His will that any should perish. And He came so that we could all be set free. And He's no respecter of persons. So why would He want some of us delivered and others of us still stuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's God's will. It's God's desire. He's just been looking for a house that was audacious enough to believe it was possible. And I thank God he don't have to look any further because he found one right here. And we're just getting started. But there's other dreams that are going to be birthed in this house. I thank God right now because there's a dream that is living out that was a dream that came a generation ago. A generation ago, God spoke to Pastor Rogers and the leaders of this church to start a Christian school. I don't even know if they needed a Christian school in the 90s. But we sure do need it now. But we don't got to start it. We just building it up. Because there was a dream before us. Y'all getting a hold of this? You realizing that that's what God dreams look like. We don't finish them. We get them to a point and then the next generation takes them to the next and then the next generation and the next generation until either Jesus tarries or it all comes into reality. But if you can do it and you can do it in your lifetime, you need to go back to the dream room, baby. Because it's about changing lives beyond your sphere of influence. People you don't even know. People you may never meet. People who won't be born while you're still breathing. But your life is going to impact them because that's what God dreams do. You say, Pastor, I got a dream. God, I believe it's a God dream. And the only person it blesses is you. It's not a God dream. Dream, that's where people get so messed up on this, is they think if I can imagine God doing great things for me, then he's, no, it's never about you. Now, don't get me wrong, when you get involved in what he's doing, it'll be like it's almost about you, because he'll bless you. But the moment it becomes about you, his presence is going to lift. 
Because He's only going to increase you and bless you as you recognize yourself as the conduit of that blessing. You realize what He did with Abraham. He said, Abraham, I'm not, it's not about you, son. But I'm setting you up as a conduit. And the people who bless you, I will bless. And the people who curse you, I will curse. Because I'm looking to bless the nations. But I can't bless the nations until I find a nation through which I can funnel the blessing. And God is looking to bless Danville. He's looking to bless Vermilion County. He's looking to bless the state of Illinois. That is the heart of God. So he said, well, don't you think he wants to judge us? If he wanted to judge us, he'd have done that a long time ago. It's in his mercy, his desire is to bless us, but he can't bless us till we become people worth blessing. And so he's looking for somebody to get a vision and a dream that will begin to be the conduit of the glory of God to flow in our community and to flow in our city and flow in our region and flow in our state so that we position ourselves where Illinois cannot be a laughing stock of the nation, but it can be an example to the nation. I believe God can do it. God can give us Illinois. God can turn it around. God... We didn't have more governors at prayer meetings than they are in the prison cells. It could happen. It could happen. It ain't so, but it could happen. God can turn it around. But not till He finds somebody who will get a God dream and become the conduit for Him to do that. Amen. Stand with me all over the house today. Today is both, I, I, I love and hate what I had to share with you today because today is very ethereal. It's very much concept driven, not very practical. And so if today is all you hear, it may excite you a little bit, but it's not going to help you get there. So I need you to stay tuned in. I need you to be connected for this series. If you have to miss a Sunday, get online, get on YouTube, watch the rerun. Because I believe God doesn't just want to birth these dreams. But that's what he was so adamant with me this time around. Because I preached about dreams six years ago. But this time God said, don't just tell them to dream. But help them figure out how to make it happen. Because it's from dream to reality this time. This time we're following it through. But for the next couple weeks, what I'm challenging you to do in your own walk is begin to ask God to birth a dream on the inside. Some of you already have one. You just need it revived. You just need God to revive it because the flame has flickered. Disappointment, discouragement, delay has caused you to begin to doubt whether it could happen. And you need God to just fan the flame on it again. But some of you, literally, there are some of you in this room that you just, you never even con- had to grab the concept that God wanted to give you a dream. You knew he, he gave dreams and visions. You, you knew there's a dream and a vision over the house. You, you, but you, he wants you. Every person in this room, from those that are over almost to 100, I don't think anybody's over 100. Almost 100, you're closer to 100 than you are to 50. All the way down to those of you who just aged out of Hope Kids and everybody in between. God wants to give you a dream now. Not when you're older, not when you were younger, now. Thanks for watching this word today. I hope that it challenged you and I hope it gave you some practical application for how you can follow Jesus more effectively. If by chance you're watching and you have never made Jesus Lord of your life, let's do that right now. If you just pray these simple words with me, the words aren't magic, but what you're saying, if you believe in your heart, it's going to change your entire life. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe you are a savior. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to cleanse me. And I declare that you are the Lord of my life. And from this day forward, I will follow you to the best of my ability. In Jesus' name, amen. 
If you prayed that prayer today, we are so excited because you just began the first step of an amazing journey of following Jesus. But one thing's for sure, you can't do this alone. You need community. You need a church family. So please reach out to us. Let us know you prayed the prayer and we'll give you some next steps about how you can follow Jesus and continue in your faith. Thanks for watching today. We love you and I hope you'll come back and watch again next week when we have another word that I believe will minister to your life.